everybody, we're back. And uh, my next guest tonight is a regular at the Gotham Comedy Club right here in New York City. Please welcome a very funny man, Rich Franchese. Thanks. Thanks a lot. How you guys doing? So I know I don't look like a guy you'd call for comedy, do I? <laughs> matter of fact, I look like a guy you'd call if you want a union meeting busted up. <laughs> it's okay, though. That's right, I am Italian, so you know what that means. Woo! I still have my Christmas lights up. <laughs> That's right. We take them down one week in July when we sell the fireworks, then they go back up. <laughs> I'll say one thing I'm proud to say. You know, a lot of famous people are Italian, like uh, Superman. Oh, yeah, see, not many people know that, but Superman's Italian. I got the proof. Like, what happens whenever there's trouble? What does Superman do? He runs to a phone booth, he makes one phone call. <laughs> I'll say one thing, though. Italians, we have, like, some weird customs. Like, I'll tell you the truth. In any other culture, if somebody had a deformity, you go, like, hey, listen, you know, when the guy with the hole in his face comes here, like, you know... Try not to, like, look at him or, like, bring attention to it. We go, hey, Joey Hole in the face, how you doing? <laughs> Guy's got, like, one leg shorter than the other. We're like, hey, Frankie, hi low. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, then we start going, like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> you know, like, the guy really likes this, you know what I mean? That's why nobody in my neighborhood ever became a doctor. I mean, it wouldn't make sense. A guy gets his ear ripped off in an accident, goes to the emergency room. Hey, doc, can you help me? No, but I can give you a great nickname. <laughs> How about Joe Van Gogh? <laughs> it's okay. See, nobody in my neighborhood would get that anyway. <laughs> They're not exactly the most cultured, you know what I mean? I mean, I told my friends I went to the Met. They go, did they win? Plus, it's not that I've been void of culture in my own life. Like, in my house, my mother, growing up, she had the Mona Lisa right in my house on dinner plates. <laughs> so I grew up looking at this. One day, I'm in art class in college. In front of 200 students, the teacher has to ask me who created the Mona Lisa. I said, Corningware. <laughs> of course, you have to be careful what you buy, especially on the streets of New York, you know. You have to be careful. Like, the other day, I bought a defective Ouija board. It has no vowels. The only people I get in touch with are New York City cab drivers. <laughs> and speaking of Superman, I know I mentioned Superman. I just want to let any single woman out there watching at home, I want to let you know that I am great in bed. That's right, I can sleep 12, 14 hours at a cliff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, to tell you the truth, I'm uh, at the age now where food is more important to me than sex. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a mirror over my kitchen table. I want every view of that cheeseburger as I eat it. To me, a Wendy's commercial is like a porno video. It's like, wow, look at the size of those pickles. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing, though. I'm actually, I'm over the hill now. I'm married now, and, uh, you know, I'm happily married. But uh, say one thing about me. I'm a sport. You know, my people. Like, when I got engaged, I gave my wife this huge diamond, you know? I said, here, honey, take it. It means nothing to me. And then when she had it appraised, it meant nothing to her, too. <laughs> but, of course, you know, I'm just being honest. And I believe that women love honesty, don't you? Guys, here's a little tip. Honesty. Women love honesty, especially when they're trying to trick us into saying something we shouldn't say. <laughs> How many times do you guys heard this one? Just be honest with me, I won't get mad at you. <laughs> you remember how you felt when you fell for that one, all right? I'm going out with this woman, she pulls this on me. Just be honest with me, I won't get mad at you. Tell me what you want. I guess her sister was the wrong answer. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, I remember when I was single, I used to go out to dance clubs to meet women. And I haven't been out in a while, you know what? I don't know if any of you go to dance clubs. They haven't changed in 10 years. I went recently, the music's pounding. Boom! Boom! I go into the men's room. They have the music piped into the men's room. What is the point of this? <laughs> See, if the guy in the urinal next to me asks me to dance, I'm leaving. <laughs> like, what if he hears his favorite song and, like, hits a spin or something? You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, hey, Ty, you want to back that off, please? Speaking of music, I'm glad I brought this up. Uh, 
A lot of African Americans are mad at white people because we stole their music. See, rock and roll was the black man's music, and we stole it through Elvis. And I agree with that. See, but I think that rappers stole a lot from Italians. <laughs> That's right, folks. Gangster, that was ours. <laughs> They may use the phonetic spelling, but that was definitely ours first, all right? <laughs> Big, ugly, heavy gold jewelry, oh, that was ours. <laughs> Drive-bys. <laughs> I think we invented those, didn't we? Well, you guys have been great. I gotta go to my other job. I got some money to collect. <laughs> Thanks a lot, I appreciate it, thank you. Nice job. Let's play Jay-Z, everybody. I think I can take them. We'll be right back. Stick around.